In this video, we're going to build a randomized lighting automation in Home Assistant using nothing but built-in integrations. And it's going to be a lot easier than you think. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone, my name is Jeff, and if this is your first time here, at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using smart home tech. This week, I wanted to tackle the challenge of building a randomized lighting automation to use when we're on vacation. But we're going to do this build using nothing but built-in Home Assistant integrations. This is definitely an advanced topic. We're going to cover everything from helpers to looping scripts to even some advanced Jinja that probably borders on programming. This isn't hard stuff, but it can be intimidating for those that haven't spent a lot of time in the YAML. And while we're going to do as much of it in the UI as possible, there is going to be some YAML involved. But if you're looking to get into advanced automations in Home Assistant, this project is going to touch on quite a few of the tools that can help make that happen. Okay, so the basic idea here is we're going to build an automation that can randomly turn on a light, then after a randomized delay, turn that light off again and be able to loop through that pattern continuously over a period of time until sunrise or we cancel our vacation mode. The effect will look something like this. I did what you see here using the same script, but with a shorter random delay so you could see the random pattern. The hope is the final script's random pattern will be enough to simulate human presence, at least enough to fool those on the outside looking in. So let's get started. Since we want to randomize which lights turn on in this setup, we'll need a way to select a random entity, and for that we can use a group. Groups are one of the things we still can't do via the UI, so we're going to have to jump into our groups.yaml file to set this up. Here I've defined vacation lights, and in it I list all the light and switch entities I want to use in this project. And don't worry about mixing the lights and switches in this group, because this solution will be able to take advantage of both. Once you have a list to pull from, hit save and jump back into the UI. To limit this lighting effect to occurring when we're on vacation, I suggest using an input boolean. Input booleans, or toggles as they're known in the UI, are considered helpers. So to create one, head to configuration and helpers. Click add and choose toggle. Define this as vacation mode and then click create. This will give you a switch that you can flip manually or via an automation to indicate when home assistant should be in vacation mode. I find helpers like this make good conditions and triggers in automations and scripts. And this, again, will allow us to control this lighting effect to ensure that it doesn't happen when we're actually home. Before you leave this area, let's add a text helper as well. This one I called current random light, and it will store the entity ID of our light or switch that this script chooses. Technically, I think we could probably skip this step, but it could also help you visually troubleshoot what's going on if needed. Now that we have some pre-work done, we can get started on the script. Head over to Configuration, then Scripts. I named this one Randomized Vacation Lighting, but really the name doesn't matter. Under Sequence, we're going to select Repeat for the first action. Repeat type will be set to Until, and Condition type will be Sun, and we'll set it to After Sunrise. This means this script, once started, will run until sunrise. Then we need to add our steps. The first action is going to choose a random entity from our group and store it in our text helper. So the service is input text set value. Entity ID is the name of our text helper, current random light. And for value, we're going to have to use a template which is going to kick us into YAML mode. So let's go ahead and head up to the three dots in the upper right of our sequence and choose YAML mode. Now, before we continue, I want to take a moment and talk about templates. So let's flip over to our developer tools and templates. Here, I can demonstrate how templates work. For this project, we need to get the entity ID of our randomly chosen light or switch so that we can pass it to our turn on and our turn off service in our automation. So we're using the state attr function in our template to get the attribute we need. In a template, the curly braces here simply tell Home Assistant to evaluate whatever is in between them. It could be some math, or it could be outputting the result of a function like this. Again, in this case, we're going to use a function called state underscore attr, which can get the value of an entity's attributes. To use it, we simply call the function, we give it the name of an entity like group.vacationlights, then an attribute we want, like entity ID. If you're using a single entity, this function will return a single attribute's value. 
But when you use your group as an entity, you get a list of all the entity IDs in that group, and we just want one. So in this case, we're going to use random. Now, random only grabs one item from the group. There is a way to get more than one, but I think that crosses into programming, and for now, I want to avoid that. But I am going to put an example of how you might do that in the blog post related to this video. So if you want to see a little more details on how you might pull that off, check out the blog post linked in the description of this video. Okay, back in our script. Since we want whatever this template outputs to be a string, we're going to have to wrap this template in single quotes. Then any quotes that we've used inside this function need to be double single quotes. And the output of this bit of Jinja will be our randomized entity ID that we can then use in other parts of this automation. Next, we need to turn on our entity. Since our group can contain lights or switches, our next hurdle is calling the right service to turn on our randomized entity. Light.turnon for lights and switch.turnon for switches. But Home Assistant gives us a cheat. We're going to use the Home Assistant.turnon service, which doesn't care about a device's domain. That way, we don't have to worry about whether it's a light or a switch. Then we set the entity ID to whatever we stored in our text helper using another template and the states function. This function simply returns the state of an entity, which for our text helper is our random chosen entity ID. So our next action will be delay and we'll use the attributes minutes. For this template, we're going to use the range function, which just provides a progressive list of numbers between two integers. And then once again, we're going to use random so that we can get just one single number between those two numbers. In this case, I want the lights to stay on for a random amount of minutes between 5 and 59. So in this template, I'm going to use range with 5, 59, and then random. The output of this template will be a single number between 5 and 59. After the delay, we want to turn off our light. So we're going to call the homeassistant.turnoff service. And for entity, we're going to use the same template as before to get the value stored in our text helper. And for one final action, we'll set the value of our text helper to none. This will clear the last value and could help troubleshoot later if we run into issues. Then this script should be ready. Now you may be asking why I chose to use a script here instead of an automation. And the truth is it comes down to being able to cancel that randomized lighting effect because there are times in which it's going to be running and we return home from vacation in the middle of the night and I want to be able to kill those lighting effects. With an automation, you only have two choices for canceling those actions. The first is you could simply turn off the automation and set the parameter stop actions to yes, which will cancel any of the remaining actions in the automation. But my problem with this option is that you have to remember then to turn the automation back on or it's not going to fire again. The other option is you could simply call the reload automation service, which would reload all the automations and cancel any of the automations that are running. The problem with this option is you could have any number of automations running at any given time, and this option is going to cancel all of them, when in reality all you want to do is cancel one. So I used a script which has a state on or off that's tied to whether the script is running, which means I have an explicit way of turning it on and off. But I do want the script to start automatically, so for that part, I'm going to use an automation. Head to Configuration and Automations and click Add Automation. I named this one Run Vacation Lights. For the first trigger, I picked Sun. I set the trigger ID to Sundown and the event to Sunset. I added a second trigger for Sun, set the trigger ID to Sunup and the event to Sunrise. And we'll add one more trigger, this one for State. Trigger ID will be Cancel. Entity ID will be our input boolean dot vacation mode, which sets this automation to be triggered at sunrise, sunset, and whenever we turn off vacation mode. For action, we're going to use the choose action so that we can handle our three triggers differently. The choose action is a great way for including some basic decision logic to your automations. Here, for the first condition, we're going to set the type to trigger and the trigger ID to sundown. At sundown, we want to start our randomized light script but only if vacation mode is on. So we'll add a second condition. Entity will be our vacation mode helper and state will be on. Then for action, we'll call the script turn on service and select our randomized lighting script using the pick entity button. So at sundown, if vacation mode is on, we'll start our randomized lighting script. Then we're going to add another option for choose and this time we're going to use the condition or and under it, we'll add a condition to look for the trigger ID sunup 
Then we'll add another condition to look for the trigger ID cancel. Then we'll add a new condition looking to see if the state of our randomized lighting script is on. Then for action, we'll call the script.turnoff service and pick our randomized lighting script. That way at sunrise or if vacation mode is turned off, if our randomized lighting script is on, we're going to turn it off. And after that, we're done. I know there's at least one hacks integration geared to simulating human presence. And that one uses your history to determine which devices should be involved. But I wanted to show you that you could build a randomized lighting automation using nothing but what Home Assistant ships with. And it gave us an opportunity to talk a little more about some of the tools in Home Assistant that might be helpful in your other automation use cases. You can find a walkthrough of all of the YAML used in this project posted on my blog. So you can easily copy and paste if you want to use it. And if you want to keep up with the changes I make to this automation and script as I put it to regular use, be sure to follow me over on GitHub at github.com slash thejeffreystone, where I publish my smart home configuration. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more home automation content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.